I understand that Paul Chesser is here to present this proposal, and I would like to invite him to do so. I would ask that he limit the presentation to five minutes at most. Your line is open. Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Gutierrez. National Legal and Policy Center promotes ethics in public life through research, investigation, education, and legal action, and is the sponsor of the Corporate Integrity Project. An annual report on due diligence on human rights is all we're asking for from the Walt Disney Company, and we ask our fellow shareholders to support our resolution. But Disney's board of directors says that's a waste of the company's time and money. This multi-billion dollar corporation fritters away millions of dollars of the company's resources on social justice initiatives for things like erasing symbols of our nation's history, forcing abusive racial training programs on employees, and adding content warnings to classic films like Dumbo and Fantasia. Disney's board thinks the company has plenty of time and money for things like that. But do you know what else Disney has the time and money for? They have the time and money to film Mulan in the part of communist China with among the most disgusting and egregious human rights violations in the world in Xinjiang. Forced abortion, slavery, torture, and genocide are among the reported atrocities conducted under the authoritarian government against the Muslim minority Uyghurs in northwest China. The degree of evil in this region is so bad that it means you cannot trust anything that is produced there because of the forced labor practices that are going on. You can't trust the cotton, the sugar, assembled products, anything that comes out of that region. And it's not just me saying that. It's the human rights groups that are saying that. And it's also top members of Congress from both political parties who say that. The Democratic chairman of the Special Joint Committee on China and Congress confirmed to Disney's ESPN recently that, yes, quote, it is a genocide. But rather than avoid Xinjiang and the abusive government that manages the region, Disney instead films new on there and then thank the local authorities for their help in the film's credits. So when the rest of the corporate responsible corporate world is running away from the stigma of slavery, Disney is praising the local communists. Meanwhile, Disney executives say they will not release any new films in Russia due to Vladimir Putin's aggression against the Ukraine. Since when do ESG principles mean you get to support genocidal regimes in Asia, but you must oppose colonial warmongering in Europe? It seems like cognitive dissonance to me. But again, as the board says in this year's proxy, they just don't have the time and money to be accountable for this stuff. What other priorities besides Mulan has the company made time and money for? They so badly wanted a Disney resort in Shanghai that the company gave majority ownership of the theme park to the Chinese government controlled company. And Disney's leadership also thinks it's important for ESPN to be in business partnership with NBA China and Chinese broadcaster Tencent despite those entities' well-known censorship practices. And Disney executives make sure that their Chinese government partners stay happy by self-censoring episodes of The Simpsons and movies like Doctor Strange. No need to upset dictators Xi Jinping. Still, Disney's board of directors says our shareholder resolution asking for a human rights report is a, quote, misplaced premise. Disney's lawyers use lots of meaningless words like policies, practices, principles, and standards to make it appear like they are vigilant in doing something about human rights. They even say they are, quote, deeply committed to human rights. Deeply committed is a favorite phrase of corporate lawyers. Disney even says it supports documents like the United Nations Universal Declaration on Human Rights. But is this statement doing anything to China for its genocidal actions? Just because you say you're for something doesn't mean you're doing anything about it. Rather than all these empty statements and policies, National Legal Policy Center wants to know what Disney's actually doing and conducting its business with China and other countries with poor human rights protections. But all the Disney board has to say for itself is that our proposal is a waste of their time, that they don't have enough resources to carry it out, and that they are already disclosing their human rights activities. Well, the Security and Exchange Commission disagreed with Disney's lawyers, which is why this resolution is in this year's proxy statement. 
We have asked our fellow shareholders at BlackRock and Vanguard to support our proposal, but they have given no indication whether they will do so. I guess their so-called ESG principles also have an exception clause for communist China. Nonetheless, all we ask is that Disney's leadership simply explain the human rights impacts of their interactions with foreign governments and entities. If they can't bring themselves to do that, then the question we have for Disney executives is, what are you hiding? Thank you. Thank you. The board of directors has recommended a vote against this proposal for the reasons set out in the proxy statement. The next item is a shareholder pro 